Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 31st, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storms on its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Trend Micro's Saturday initiative released an advisory making public a remote code execution vulnerability in Windows JScript. This means that essentially an attacker would be able to execute code using malicious JavaScript. Now, I think there are two reasons why you shouldn't really be panicking about this disclosure. First of all, while this does execute code, it is still limited by the browser sandbox. So you would need a second exploit to break out of the sandbox and really compromise the system. Secondly, there are literally dozens of bugs like this that Microsoft fixes each year. I think there are probably a few dozen more out there. This is just one more JScript vulnerability. And I hope come June patch due Tuesday, Microsoft will release a patch for this. But well, talking about vulnerabilities, there's actually what I consider a more severe vulnerability in Git. And this is one that has been patched today and it could lead to arbitrary code execution if you clone a malicious repository. The problem here is that on the client side, when you clone a repository, you can define post checkout scripts. Uh, these scripts run after you check out the repository. Now, of course, these scripts are not downloaded from the repository. However, due to this vulnerability that does affect submodule repositories, it is possible for an attacker to set up a malicious repository that will then lead to script execution using these post checkout hooks. Interesting vulnerability and something that you should definitely patch in particular, if you clone repositories that you don't necessarily control. This release also fixes a second vulnerability that can lead to the reading of random pieces of memory due to an error in how NTFS paths are sanity checked. Not much detail about this sounds kind of like an interesting vulnerability. And if you need a reason to review your spam blacklists uh, today, well, a Spam Cannibal had some issues yesterday marking every particular IP address as spam. The root cause is apparently that Spam Cannibal actually shut down last August. As of last August, uh, their DNS servers no longer responded at all. Now, last night, who is changed for this particular domain, spamcannibal.org, and all for sudden, all IP addresses that you looked up returned a response, essentially marking them as the source of spam. Apparently, the domain had expired and it looked like someone else picked it up and then essentially redirected it to a domain parking site, which usually implies that a wildcard record is configured to then direct all host names to this parked site. Now, this isn't always malicious. Sometimes registrars are doing this in order to give their customers some extra time to renew their domain. I just checked it as I was recording this podcast and it looks like the Spam Cannibal domain again resolves to the original web page. Also, I no longer get any results for any blacklist entries. So it looks like you're back to normal here and you're safe, but still uh, please check that you're not using Spam Cannibal as part of your spam checks. And well, it's not just consumer software that is vulnerable. Sometimes it's also enterprise security software. The latest example is IBM's QRadar. The product apparently suffers from a number of different vulnerabilities leading to unauthenticated remote code execution in some cases. So if your company does run QRadar, then get in touch with IBM and a patch has been released. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.